All right, live again. Hopefully there's audio this time. <laughs> oh. Hopefully some people will join. Show zero people. I had up to 30 and then the audio went out because someone called me. So... I don't know if people will, will see this new live stream. I was going to say, you know, if uh, a lot of people say just use your cell phone on YouTube. And, uh, yeah, stuff like this happens when you're on a cell phone. <laughs> you know, you can record using your cell phone for videos and stuff for YouTube. But it, you don't. it's not a permanent thing. It's a really, really bad idea. Just get... An action camera. I have the DJI Action 3, and they've dropped the price to 300 bucks. So for $300, you have the absolute best action camera. The only one that's better than it is a $500 camera. I think it's the one that Catfish Dave is using now. The uh, uh, Ace Pro. The three, Insta360 Ace Pro. I think that's what Catfish Dave is using. That's a $500 camera, and the only difference between that camera and this one is better low light. So stuff like this, it would see this a lot better than this camera, which, I mean, you've seen some of my low light videos. You see low light on this. You see where I blew myself out because I had that light on too much when I published this video. But for, you know, 300 bucks, I mean, I broke mine. I actually broke mine. I sent it into DJI. I bought a new one for 300 bucks, And they fixed it under warranty. And it's on its way back to me. And they said... Uh, they showed me, like, the pricing. If I would have had to pay it myself, it would have been 80 bucks to repair the camera. And they did it within a week. They fixed it within a week. So, I'm going to have two cameras. I think I'm going to sell it. Because <clears throat> I only run one camera. I mean, it would be nicer to have, like, a release camera or a second, you know, view and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, I'm just kind of a <clears throat> bottom-of-the-barrel YouTuber that uh, YouTube barely pays anything. So, I'm, just, I'm sticking to just one camera. You know, if I start doing really, really well, I'll do two cameras or even hire somebody to film me if I start doing really well. But for now, you know, it'll take me three months to pay for one camera with only YouTube money, which is fine. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I did the, uh, you know, the I quit video because I'm just, I want to slow down a little bit. I'm not going to try to push a schedule. Uh, getting a bite on that one again. I'm not going to push a schedule, uh, but, uh, you know, I have the potential if I want to kick it into overdrive, do more videos, or just relax and do less videos. And it's going to be random publishing, you know, random published videos. Yeah, I'm watching the rods in the background. You can't, you can't see them. Uh, you can see one, one rod right there, but there's, one, two, three, three rods right there. I missed all the comments from the previous live stream because I got a call and it screwed up the live stream. When I, and uh, it muted me for some reason. I couldn't get unmuted. And I'm going to cause all kinds of shadows trying to look at the things here. Yep, much better. Fishing Midwest or Mid-South. Fishing Mid-South, welcome live stream. Knox Stacks, welcome live stream. Father Hog, welcome live stream. Yeah, it does have a bigger sensor than uh, like a GoPro. Oh, the another rod got a hit. The middle, the middle one. So there are channel cats here. I was saying on the other live stream, I'd probably, I might cut down one of these baits just so I can catch a channel catfish. At least have a fish on video. I don't know if like the like the one that Catfish Dave is using, the Ace Pro. I don't think it has the pre-record feature that's on the DJI. This is a killer feature because 
it's recording right now, but it's not recording. Like, it's not saving the file. It will save it the past 60 seconds till now when I hit the button. Or when I hit the button on the phone, which I'm doing a live stream on the phone, so I can't use it on the phone. They are really hitting that. But it's, uh, I think they're just chewing on it again. Or on that one. I hear the owl again. If they chew on it enough, they'll get themselves hooked too. Quite a possibility if there's channel cats out there feeding, then there might not be any flatheads because a channel cat near a big flathead would become a meal. <laughs> so, but well, who knows? Or is, oh yeah, and my uh, phone is on top of my cooler where my bait is. So if I want to swap it up for camel cats, I'm going to have to reel one in and cut that one down. Or move you guys, one of the two. Yeah, the other stream was going pretty good too. I got up to like 35 people f watching it. Now I've only got 11. Yay. I probably should have put my phone on silent or something. Uh, I'm trying to decide if I want to uh, put out more bait. Chester Wyatt, hey, welcome live stream. It has been a while. Oh, uh-oh, there we go. Yeah, downsize one. Yeah, I might downsize one. That one on the right has been hit the most. So I might cut that one down and then put out two rods from that one piece and cut it down really small. Ow! That is a big old stick in the water. Huge stick in the water. Now a big enough channel catfish would be able to eat this. And I'm going to cut it down a little bit put two rods out with two small pieces. Right Whenever I'm fishing for channel cats, I use absolutely tiny, tiny pieces. But I got big hooks. Since I've got such a big hook, I'm going to have to use a little bit bigger piece. Small one should be able to get hooked on this. I've seen baby catfish caught with eight dot hooks before. What do you guys think? Small enough? Should I go smaller? <laughs> I have gone much smaller. flowing the right way flowing downstream and we got a little bit of flow this one is on that giant piece of wood all right Other one is a double hook rig. These are both dragon rigs, but I can put a sinker on here and maybe get channel cat. We've got these sinkers with a you know little clip on it. 
because these are my dragon weights right here. They have clips on them. And so I started using three-way swivels and other, other things. I haven't decided to, exactly which one I want to use. Probably doesn't matter. <laughs> All right, how do I want to cut this? There's an even smaller piece. And funny enough, it's going to have that big old... <laughs> Maybe I'll pull that away from the hook a little bit. Or hold it off the bottom. And watch this catch a 40-pound flathead. Enough. With the SmackDown rod holders, I can put two rods and one rod holder. Clean my knife up. I like using these ceramic knives. They cut through frozen skipjack easily, and they're good for you know non-frozen as well. keep it clean they can break but i mean you can break a metal one too most of the most of my ceramics i have broken oh i need to turn this light up Looks like it's coming out pretty good on the good camera. Oh, we're recording, aren't we? No, we're not. Well, I'm pre-recorded. Maybe I'll get a channel cat. I guess I'll show you this one that I'm not, not going to use. I've been wanting to use it. And I ended up coming here instead of where blue cats are. So this has a double hook rig. Some dropper loop with the hook. And then float. And another hook. Which looks like a straw snail. Hopefully it is a straw snail. These are from uh, Slunger Cat? Slunger Cat? Slugger Cat? I don't... I can never remember how they are spelled. I'll get off my camera. And, uh, of course, I got a discount code there. Billy10 to get 10% off their products. <laughs> so, I probably should know their, you know, their name a little bit better, but hey... It's just, uh, you might recognize the name of the guy behind it. It's uh, Chris, Chris Sounders is behind that company. He's a good guy. He's done a lot of educational YouTube videos on how to, uh, you know, catch catfish and stuff. Uh, I think one of his buddies went fishing with me on a guided trip and we caught a, a absolute massive, massive flathead catfish and i went to an area that i don't like to really fish because i always not i don't really catch anything there but it was close closer to where he was staying so we went there and ended up that's all we caught it was an absolute massive catfish and he that's his facebook profile he's had it as his facebook profile forever that's really cool I thought that catfish was really cool. I did a, uh, like, Release the Beast on YouTube and everywhere else. I'm a little short of releasing that monster flathead. So you can look for it. There's there's a few on there. I need to get a few more going. Release the Beast videos, or at least shorts. 
I haven't been doing, you know, I haven't been doing any like shorts on YouTube in a while. And most of the shorts I, I was doing were just from previous videos. So I was just pulling out the fish catches. And a lot of people, their, uh, <laughs> their attention span is exactly 10 seconds. So if you're not, you don't have a fish on the rod, then they move on to other videos looking for crazy stuff to watch. So, which is just the way it goes. Uh, at least I can get, you know, some traction using the shorts whenever I show, like, you know, only fish catches on shorts. But on on the long videos, I try to talk about what I'm doing, you know, how my day's going. Like, today's been terrible. Uh, I, I mentioned it again, like I said, on the other live stream. This morning, I went to a spot, a new spot, and promptly broke my trolling motor's prop. And I've not, I've done that before on steeper ramps. For some reason, the boat comes off the, the trailer just right to just smash into the trolling motor. And I got to figure out how to fix that. It's going to be a, a problem. It seems like all the ramps around here, I don't really have a problem with that. There is, there's not that many really steep ones. There's a steep one on Norris and there's a steep one right down the river from here. Uh, but I, I don't launch at those two ramps. I don't like launching at steep ramps. Uh, today I'll try to launch at the steep ranch, ramp, 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 not ranch, ramp, to hopefully catch a 40 pound blue in that area. But uh, yeah, didn't happen. And uh, there was also like 50 boats out there too. That would have drove me nuts. And uh, they're playing with the middle one again. <laughs> they really want that big piece of bait. <laughs> Maybe I'll put that into the video. Which means all I have to do is hit the record button and then hit the record button again. Uh, pre-record it helps me a lot with my editing although you know it might not end up in the video who knows depends on what it looks like I think it's looking good up there I would be looking on my phone but I'm on a live stream on the phone <laughs> let me look at the comments I keep not looking at the comments and yeah I'm gonna black out the screen here uh, Shad Daddy, welcome to live stream. Haven't seen you in a long time. I heard you were fishing somewhere though, so that's good that you're out and about and fishing. Uh, P6 Labs, welcome to live stream. Real time catfishing, welcome to live stream. Uh, sorry, I'm putting my thumb right over the thing here. It's like if I put my hand on one side, I'm blocking the light. On the other side, I'm blocking the camera. I'm in one of my favorite creeks, Chad Daddy. There's no skipjacks here. I know that. I, bet I was trying for them, and they weren't biting. But I think the white bass are here, are starting to come in. And the flatheads are starting to come in, too, because I lost something absolutely epically big. I just... I've, I don't think I've ever had anything pull that hard. And I accidentally hit... It's going to be on video whenever I get this video on and get it, you know, published or whatever. But I accidentally hit the clicker. So here I am holding it. And then it's like, oh, I'm hooked. I'm going to run. And it's just like, boom. And I'm just like, wow. It, it, it reminded me of... It was a flathead. It 100% had to have been a flathead because it had the typical, you know barely biting i reeled down on it and it's like it's sack potato it's like man that's a you know big fish or whatever and reel on it and then it just i guess the fish clicked i'm like i'm hooked i'm gone and you know you could just imagine the the catfish turning and then the big tail swiping of a big you know 80 pounder or whatever just taking off and just you know my drag couldn't keep up with it and then gone it, it popped the hook it didn't get hooked. 
And if it did get hooked, there, it probably would have broke my line. I mean, it just felt that big. So, yeah, that's the second absolute monster that I've lost in this creek. I said on, I did say it on another live stream. It was a, a client I was with that we lost something. It broke like 80 pound uh, leader line that fish but we had no control over it it went upstream and then downstream and then upstream and then downstream and then broke the line so there are monsters in here i've caught a 45 pound flathead in here multiple 30s multiple 20s so there's some big cats in here they are just not predictable i mean this is 60 degree water and you know that if i remember right I was told anything under 65, they start shutting down. But I have caught them in 40 degree water too. So this is the south. They don't always turn off. But And I was looking for bait. I was actually hunting bait and saw some big signatures on my sonar here. And I'm like, man, I'm going to come back here and fish, you know, fish for some flatheads. See if they're flatheads or see if they're carp. Uh, I probably should have brought my carp gear, but. Maybe I'll do that in another another time where I, I put out carp gear, I put out catfish gear, and see what I catch. Because there's definitely some monster carp in here too. And I still need to catch my trophy size carp for the Tennessee Angler Recognition Program. It's just uh, it's something that's been evading me for a lo for the longest time is catching a trophy carp. And I got the gear for it, and I've got the tiger nuts for it. So I need to get the tiger nuts back, back out. Do I use a well, William? Uh, I can't say that last name. Cornelison. Uh, do I keep afloat to keep the bait off the bottom? Not really. Three of these are 100% bottom fishing rigs they don't have any float or anything on them so they're pretty much laying flat on the bottom uh the bait might be floating up a little bit but they're just on the bottom and the big one that hit was on that now the two on the right side here you know that one i just put out for hoping for a channel catfish and this one right here they have floats on them because they are my dragging rigs now that has a big head the one on the right which you guys can see. You can't see the other ones because it's too dark or whatever. But that one right there has a big head. So I doubt that it's off the bottom. But this one is rigged up for channel catfish with a small piece of bait. So it is off the bottom. But generally on my bottom rigs, I don't run floats. But when I'm running, you know, dragging rig like this one, which I've already shown once, got a float on it. This is a double hook dragging rig. I didn't want to try, you know, casting this crazy thing out and bottom fishing with it from, because of, uh, you know, <laughs> I do have trees and stuff above me. It was risky enough casting that one out. That's a really long leader. Like this one's leader isn't, isn't quite that long, the one on the right with the head. But that is a long leader that's on that one. And I'm not, obviously I'm not dragging. I'm bank fishing in a creek for flatheads uh but uh i think i know where the big some of the blues are too it's like i lost lost a blue and caught a big blue in my normal like guiding area the the upper upper watts bar so it's uh i think the fish are there which is funny there is a tournament next weekend the tournament is the King Cat Tournament. And it's like a $300, $350 entry fee or something. And I don't have a partner. So I'm probably not going to do the tournament. I want to, but unless I can find a partner, I'm not going to do it. And there's always a possibility I might get a book trip too. Someone books a trip, I'm going to take them fishing. <laughs> I'm not going to go to a tournament. You know, book trip is a guarantee, you know, almost guaranteed uh, win. While, you know, a tournament isn't a guaranteed win. Although I think I know where the fish are. But I'd say I'd say uh, quite a few others know where the fish are too now on Watts Bar. Possibly because of my videos. But, uh, yeah. 
I still have a few, you know, I I don't think registration is till that Friday either. And I'm, you know, my next week is my birthday. So I ought to go to, you know, find a way to do the tournament. Just because it's my birthday week, I'm going to have a few days off. You know, that Thursday, that Thursday, or Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I have off. I couldn't get the entire week. So if anyone wanted to book a trip on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, just uh, send me a message. We can do a weekday trip if anybody wanted to. And then Friday, Saturdays, I think open. I don't think I got anybody on Sunday. I might have someone on Sunday, but Saturday I know it's open. And that's the tournament. But, you know, they allow up to three people and a, and a child or, or elderly person as a team. And I don't, I don't have anybody to go to that uh to it, and I don't want to do it alone. I don't do any any uh, tournaments alone. I think that's the problem I had with my last, with the first tournament of the Poland Creek tournament. I didn't have anybody then too, so I didn't do it. Because uh, it's always easier, you know. I hate to end up getting like a hundred pound fish solo during a tournament. I'd be so freaked out, I'd end up losing it. So it's better to have somebody else to be your net man or be the one reeling it in like I had Clint do when we did that tournament that we got second place. And I did a video of it. I had a video of catching that fish. It was it was like the second the the first place person had three fish that were under that were under. Like nobody caught I don't think anybody caught anything over. And we caught one that was was not only trophy size, but it was it was pretty big. But they because they had three under, they were one, they were like two pounds more than us. And it was twenty four pounds, and they got twenty six pounds. I mean that was a crazy tournament. I mean, you know, you think oh catfish tournament, you're going to be bringing one hundred fifty pounds worth of fish. It was like uh, not that night. It was it was hard on everybody. We one of the boats was buddies of ours, and we were talking with them. And then, like at one point, we we're like, "Okay, how how are you guys doing?" And they were like, "We're at Arby's." I'm like, "Oh, you've already pulled out and gave up." Okay, okay. So, yeah, that was a that was a hard night. It was really windy. It, it was it was to the point it probably should have been canceled. But we stayed out. We were on the river for a little bit. Uh, there's, you know, on my video, you can see how bad the waves were. And then we pulled to backwaters just to get out of the wind. And that's when we eventually found the big fish about an hour before the end of the, of the tournament. Like, I think it was like 11, 10, 30, 11 o'clock when we found that fish. And it was a 12 o'clock, you know, turn in. Or it might have been 1 o'clock turn in. I don't remember. But yeah, it was last minute fish. Anyway, uh, let me check out the comments here. I'm not getting any little bites anymore. Oh, whoops. Hello, guys. Oh, no. There we go. Uh, besides carp, what is my next tarp target? Um, I don't know. Whatever I can catch, I'd like to get a bluegill. And I was planning, there's a certain pond that has big bluegill in it that I was going to fish, but the owner of the pond thinks all the bluegill died in this pond. So that was the one I was going to go for. Uh, I'd like to get a smallmouth. Smallmouth, walleye, and whatever else would bite on, you know, trolling. I don't have my trolling baits on here because I got that trolling equipment now. So I want to try my best to get a w possible, you know, walleye, get a small mouth. So that's kind of like the, the next target or whatever, whatever I can get on the troll. It's, it's kind of funny. I got my uh, trophy size largemouth bass on cut bait from the bank. That was barely, barely trophy size, but I take it. I know I can use A rigs at a certain place in the wintertime to get giant bass, too. I, I have never got around to doing that. Uh, but there's, I may try that like next year or whatever, because uh, there's also giant uh, 
uh, what are they called? You got largemouth bass, and then you got the other one. You can tell I'm not a bass expert. It's late at night, I'm tired. I've been running all day. And probably drove 150 miles to do nothing today. Uh, but uh, spotted bass, yeah, spotted bass. I think it's the spotted bass. And you can get big ones off of A-Rig at that certain spot in the wintertime, so I need to do that. They're playing with the middle one again. <laughs> channel catfish. Why can't you eat the channel catfish bait? He will eventually hook himself if he's not already, like, hooked. He might be hooked. You pull it one more time, I'm going to walk over there. I guess he's not hooked. Hmm. Here, gizzard shad flipping. Yep, well, I guess uh, he hasn't hooked himself yet. <laughs> he needs to find my other baits that are smaller that he might get hooked on. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it was that, that one fish, the, the giant, the whatever giant, whatever it was that I lost today was within like 10 minutes. I set up here threw the baits out, got the camera going and then a little bitty bite on the rod, a reel down, massive fish that got away. And then that was it. And then it was dead for a while. And then... I started getting peck here, a peck there, a peck here, a peck there, like that. Pecking on that one again. So we got channel catfish in the area. I don't know how big they are. This this uh, creek can have some big channel cats. And in fact, like the biggest channel cat I've ever caught was on the main river. So you get the river about a mile that way. And then if you go up river, about four miles, three miles. Um, there's a bridge, and then the old bridge that they knocked into the water, and off of that old bridge, uh, off that old bridge rubble, using trout parts, I caught like a 19 pound channel cat. And it's the biggest I've seen. So. And, like, it wasn't the trophy. I've caught a trophy-sized channel cat before. And it was in the same creek, but it was, like, skinny. It was really long, but really skinny. But it hit the measurement, it, but it wasn't, like, you know, it weighed maybe eight pounds. But it was really skinny and really long enough to be a, a trophy size. I probably should have registered that one as well as a trophy just because of how big it was. Because it was definitely longer but it was also weighed a ton more. I thought it was a blue at first, but it was a channel cat. 100% channel cat. All right, looking at the, uh, oh man. Welcome live stream, Milton Hill, Bill. <laughs> uh. David Garcia, welcome to live stream. Uh. Spotted, yeah, not stacks. Stack. Let's look through here. I don't spray scents on the baits at all. I think I got a skunk nearby. I smell it, and there's something rustling in the 
in the weeds back there. But yeah, just sitting here getting skunked. Uh, yep, well, maybe I'll get something, maybe I'll not. I'm going to stay here just a little bit longer. And then uh, if I don't get anything, then uh, I'll be like in my garage talking about how bad of a day today's been. So I was hoping for a big flathead. And I think I missed one. But it is what it is. Uh, thanks, guys. Hello, fish. Jumping near the boat, laughing at me. Well, thanks guys for uh, watching my live stream. This was kind of an impromptu live stream, not even on a proper, <laughs> not even on a proper like you know stand or anything. I'm using my Whisker Seeker light that's blinding me as the light. So maybe I get something before I give up, and I'll be able to have a fish on a video, and it will be a fishing video. <laughs> I'm. Not too, I'm not scared to do skunk videos, but every now and then I will do them. So, but uh, thanks guys for watching and uh, wish me luck.